Chuck trying to pull the handle. Now Gilmore in front. He's tangled, and we've got a penalty. I think it's going to be Gilmore this time, and he's upset. He's stirring things up. He, oh, and he just got blocked right on the nose. Gilmore went right over backwards. Now Todd Gill has stepped in there. I'm not sure which Ranger that is, but just dropped. Just dropped Doug Gilmore in front of the net. Wow, some quick action there. That's Presley. We'll take a look at this unfold. Gilmore didn't have the helmet on. Gilmore will get the original penalty in front of the Ranger. Oh, it's going to go on now. Gill took another poke. And we'll see what happens with Gill. He may get the boot for that or some extra penalty minutes at least. He wanted a shot at Presley. Gill is upset coming to the defense of Doug Gilmore, who will get the original penalty for dumping off Samuelson in front of the Ranger net. Temper's really flying here, and now we're starting to get to the edge of this game physically that I thought might... Let's watch Paul Correa kick it up a couple of notches and try and feel what Adam Foote is feeling as he tries to catch him. It was a good play by Adam Foote there, which I didn't see in the first time around. He gave him... Well, he squared it free, and now Jeremy Roenick goes back after him. Yeah, Roenick gave him a shot for taking the shot after the whistle had gone, even though Johnson just made a simple... He's out of the box, retreats towards his own bench. Now it is Santos Ozelin. Ozelin tries to get it into the neutral zone, and Joe Sackett, Paul Correa. Korea works around one man. Korea flips it in front. Shot. Score! Short-handed goal by Anaheim. It is 1-0. What an individual play by Paul Korea. David Karpa gets the goal. Play at the angle. McQuaw hauls down as he wound up. Solani will start it up ice for the Jets. Famo Solani with Brown trailing. Randy Gillen hit into the net. Solani over to Gillen. Score! but all kinds of people left the Pittsburgh Penguins. So there are a lot of new names to introduce to you in this hockey game, but the hockey world should rejoice. Mario Lemieux is not only back. CL Mogilny has just been spectacular. 25 points on the season. Here's the, look at Lindros. He took it right away from Segurov. Segurov got the stick on him. Eric looked like he actually bent his arm and trapped Segurov's stick in the crotch of his arm. Here is Desjardins shot a couple of minutes ago that hit the post. Well, you know what? He was on the faceoff dot. He wasn't at that bad of an angle. But here's the Flyers' chance now to start taking this one away from the L.A. King. What do we got? How many seconds left on the first one, Mike? 30 35. Montreal, they'll just try to climb back little by little, but they won't do it this way. Dandino is in, and fans on the shot. Oh, they score! Dandino fanned on it, and it went in the net. And a cheer you hear has to be from the 30 or so family. Yager back the other way. Yager and Nedved. Nedved ahead. Nedved in the skate. He scores! Peter Nedved in his 1-0 Pittsburgh. Passion. Watch the little stutter step here by Korea as he gets by Sakic. Sakic knew what he was going to do, but Korea still did it. And you can see Karpa, he looks like a 50-goal scorer. Controls the puck, knows he has time. One-on-one -on -one in close with Patrick Waugh, waits for him to go down. And McClellan's got it underneath him. Jamie McClellan stays there while they're jamming. Kristich, Bondra, Green, all in front of the Islander goaltender. You know, this isn't a big deal from a Washington standpoint, but I know Lauren Henning, the Islanders coach. Devin Steve. 5-1, you see the scoring opportunities. It's not shots on goal, but scoring chances. It's been all San Jose. The Kings look like they played last night, Steve. They're not sharp at all, as I mentioned earlier. Donovan in front, they score! Dodie Wood on the goal in San Jose, the 1-0 lead. As though it's a Sunday out in the park, <laughs> he kind of flips it away. Isn't that right? He didn't even look like he tried it now. Down post two on one, Recky's up on top. Recky in the shot, Recky saved, Burke rebound, sits. Granheim takes it. Ahead of him by a step. That's another situation. If it's a race, Anderson's going to win it. Savage scores! Hartford didn't clear. Savage gets his 16th, and the Canadians lead it 2 to 1. Don Char, one of many rookies that the Capitals have used this year. Islanders trying to get one early. Bob Beers. Deflected by Sigmund Pumphy, I believe. But it's a goal, and it's 1 0 Islanders.
See Patrick Waugh, the starting goaltender tonight for the Colorado Avalanche. 297 career wins. He has been solid this year, not always. Creating good scoring opportunities, and they know they don't have to worry because a forward is dropping back in their defensive position. Excellent discipline by Pat Quinn's Vancouver Canucks. Don't forget K. Will leaving. You talk to the fans around the city, they're believing that Grant Cure may be the missing piece to the Sabre puzzle. Terrific pass by Lennon to Adams. Adams just tips it, trying to tip it past Fuhr. He sprawls. Sometimes he looks acrobatic. Sometimes he looks unorthodox. But one thing he always looks is like a cop. Taken down by Steve Eisenman, who's getting physical. Zenzel back up. Zenzel the wraparound. And the save, the rebound, he scores! National Hockey Night is presented by the New Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. Peter Nedved's 29th goal of the year has given Vancouver a 2-1 lead over Buffalo. Welcome back to our National Hockey Night studios. Tom Ease with Bill Clement and Al Morgani. It's time to go to Al's corner oh, now. Yes. We wait for this every week. And Al, <laughs> Gary Bettman, February 1st, assumed the role as the first NHL commissioner. What was exactly. his first duty? Did not take long. Everybody was suspicious or they were anxious to see what Gary Bettman would be like at the first Board of Governors meeting. From what I'm told, I talked to several governors. Big difference in the way things were approached. Most important, there'll be no in-between now. I was told before, it was like, half the guys want to go to an upscale restaurant, half the guys want to go to fast food, and they always ended up in the middle. Now it's like, guys, we're going to one or the other. Let's make, our, let's make up our minds, let's make some decisions. Early decisions that has to be made. He's going to get involved in the Minnesota situation, make sure the North Stars stay put, don't go moving off to the west or southwest, wherever they want to go. The situation with the Players Association, that's being addressed very early. The divisions are going to be realigned, renamed, and they're not being asked, they're being told, and how are we going to do it? Not if, but how are we going to do it? In matters on the ice now, big name coming back to the Boston Bruins shortly. Cam Neely, gone most of last season, all of this season. He will scrimmage with the team tomorrow. Could be back as early as next week, more likely February 25th in Boston Garden when they make their return home. Neely a big addition to that club. Meanwhile, he's going to join the, the line with Adam Oates in Boston. Meanwhile, Oates' old partner in St. Louis, remember the rumors about him being traded? He's looking for $4 million in his new contract. He was booed a little in St. Louis the other night. It's not so outrageous to think after this season, Brett Howell maybe gets an offer from L.A. or Detroit. A couple of guys, one of them's going somewhere. Mike Richter, he's back with the Rangers, playing tonight, playing pretty well. Either he or John Van Beesbrook, one's going to be gone because with the new rule with expansion when you, where you can only protect one veteran goalie, this is why Grant Fury is in Buffalo now. This is why we're looking at Vancouver tonight. Either Whitmore or his partner, McLean's going to be gone. There's got to be changes. Either Van Beesbrook, Richter gone. Neil Smith has to make the decision, is it by the trading deadline on March 20th or otherwise? I think he's got more leverage by the trading deadline. I think he's got bigger problems than that also, Al. Yeah. It may be deciding whether his team is Dr. Jekyll or whether it's mm. Mr. Hyde. Believe it or not, I think this team could miss the playoffs or they could win it all. And to get a perspective from a guy that hasn't been with the team all year, I talked to Kevin Lowe at the All-Star break, and he just was traded to the, to the New York Rangers. He looked me straight in the face. I've known him for a lot of years, and he's, he was being very honest, and he said this team can win the Stanley Cup, so that's what he thinks of the Rangers. Well, of course, the Rangers last year had the best uh, regular season record. We saw what good that did them, and their fans said at the beginning of this year, we don't want to know regular season, we want to know Stanley Cup. They've only been winning, what, uh, 53 years? Well, Grant Fuhrer has been the main reason why the Buffalo Sabres have been in this game. Vancouver, quicker to the puck. Fewer, though, for the most part, has been quicker to the same. Nonetheless, Canucks lead it 2-1 to one after 2. In celebration of the All-Star Weekend, Plays of the Week starts off with a... run into him. Wow. That's not going to be taken favorably. Alexei Komalev. He ran goaltender Glenn Healy. Healy looks like he's hurt too. He's been rolling around. He's just now made it to his knees. And he's in pain. Defenseman timeout St. Louis right now. But if your defenseman jump into the play during the skirmish, that means a faceoff would be on the outside. Brett Hull, the veteran leader that he is, he told the guys, hey, stay back there, stay back. No time to go in now. Still have 20.8 seconds. Two line pass. Does your heart start beating fast like mine when he gets no, a breakaway like that?
For the first time ever, a standing room only crowd at the Igloo in Pittsburgh, and they'll see two candidates for the MVP. Mario Lemieux, the leading scorer in the league, and a guy who's got the Midas touch again, Marc Messier. Pittsburgh, home of the Pittsburgh Penguins, the third best home record in the National Hockey League, the first time ever. A standing room only crowd will be here tonight as the New York Rangers are in town. These teams meeting for the third time. The Rangers have won the first two matches. Hello, everybody. Gary Thorne, Bill Clement, Brian Ingram. Delighted to have you with us, National Hockey Night. We talk about duos in sports. Maris and Maddle, you talk about it in hockey. You're talking about Gretzky and Curry and Esposito and Orr. You're talking in football about Montana and Rice. Well the duos continue we're going to see a couple tonight. We sure are. I think if you're a general manager you keep your fingers crossed that in your career you're going to end up with at least one superstar because they tend to elevate the play of those around them. To me the Chicago Bulls are the only other team in any sport that can boast a one two punch equal to the punch that the Penguins have even today. Michael Jordan 44 points Scottie Pippen 40 points in another Chicago Bulls win. They are comparable to what the Pittsburgh Penguins have Yaramir Yager. 46 goals this NHL season so far and then you come back with Mario Lemieux with his 47 goals. The New York Rangers are a banged up team right now. They have to compete defensively against the Pittsburgh Penguins because with Yager and Lemieux if you try to go toe to toe offensively you don't win. The man who's going to step it up yet one more time their captain Mark Messier having a career year which is really something to say in 17 great seasons in the NHL and tonight the Rangers get Mike Richter back in net he hasn't played since December 30 tonight he makes the start the man he's got to stop the league's leading scorer and there is only one number 66 Mario Lemieux is in tonight. The flex over the glass and it will draw a whistle. Adam Graves working without a piece of wood out there. And yes. short handed to boot. And Mario Lemieux. I mean, so hard to defend against this power play even when you have your sticks. Mario Lemieux, as soon as he saw that Graves was without, without a stick, you know what he did? He, he kind of st stood right behind Adam Graves. I mean, he wanted it and he was yelling for it right behind Adam Graves because he knew that Graves didn't have a stick to try to stop the pass. Went right at him. I, I mean, the, the great players are, are just like piranhas out there. I mean, if you've got an Achilles heel, something that they can attack, in this case it was the fact that Graves didn't have his stick, you, you go ahead and exploit the weakness, and that's what Mario tried to do. They just couldn't get it to him. So we were talking about when Lemieux's on the power play, 30.7, without him, 6.8. Uh, it's an enormous difference and it played to stand up for your teammate but if, if Dave Roach checks Paul Stewart does a little shoulder check and sees that Stewart's going to call one on Kevin Lowe he puts his team at a nice advantage anytime you can help your team get on the power play when you're wearing